Welcome to Jenkins and Jones are out of pocket. I'm really, we, we got the finals to talk about. It's been a crazy night. The whole gang is here. We've got Josiah Johnson, the legend. We got Zach, Zach, Zach. We've got Dragonfly Jones, aka Tyler, the Jethro Jenkins, aka John. I am Gardy B, aka Mike. And first of all, before we get started talking about basketball, happy anniversary to mom and dad. John and his wife are fresh yeah. off their anniversary dinner at Cheesecake Factory. God, yeah. gourmet yeah. shit. Gourmet. Real nigga dinner. Real nigga dinner. You feel that me? is it's that is cake. true love. You take she, your boot at Cheesecake Factory, that means that you are in true love. She showed up. She said, I'm glad we can do shit like this instead of that boozy ass shit. I said, this is why I married you. Hell yeah. <laughs> this is why I married that, you. We over here meet so beautiful. salmon. You feel me? Ooh. I love it. You know, hella, hella, hella heavy whiskey. You know what I'm saying? And shit. You feel me? I love it. I've been to Cheesecake Factory probably like 3,000 times, and I will still go through every page of that menu just to see if there's something new on there that I haven't Damn seen Damn right, I'm man. not going to order it, but I just want to see it. <laughs> People weird on some too many choices. Why you mad at options, just, motherfucker? Weird. Josiah gave me the best career advice I ever got. I was broke as fuck, couldn't afford anything on the menu, and I was sitting there. But Josiah, I, I had a meeting with him at a Cheesecake Factory like seven years yeah, ago. That sounds like a party. It was very helpful. The Cheesecake Factory used to be my hamburger hamlet for the Entourage fans out there. Anybody who was going through any <laughs> issues, let's meet a cheesecake. There's tons of options. Yeah. Get you a little strawberry lemonade. You, nothing to complain about. Get you some of yeah, that, some of that uh, brown bread. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What was his advice? Just bread, just bread? Bread, bread in the business, you know what I'm saying? Come mm. on now. What was his advice, Zach? Just eat the bread. You, I, I'm not going to share it. You know, it's it's it was is. I had a lot of shit. Legit, I thought they we made a cheesecake too. Yeah. To be real, nah, cheesecake. We, met, was we met off of Fairfax. We met off of Fairfax. It okay, was a, it was a chill spot though. You should have made now, a cheesecake. No, oh. Mike, it was like a long time ago. He and I were both like I, I just left the, the NFL yeah. and had no idea what I was doing with yeah. my life and. That man helped me through a very dark exactly. time. I'm, I'm, I'm I am going to lie. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing either. Shit. But I said, hey, <laughs> he believed me. So I'm going to say whatever fucking makes sense. Yeah. I gave way better advice than I fucking, when I didn't have it figured out, too. I, I totally understand yeah. that. All right. Let's talk about finals game two. The Warriors. The Revenge of the Warriors. Uh, what would you guys think of the game? <laughs> Don't roll your eyes at me, Jonathan. <laughs> I hate everybody. <laughs> I hate everything in, in, in this finals except for Jason Tatum. I hate the fans. I hate the Warriors of the Celtics. Everything's Wait, trash. Is that the, is that the same guy? Wait, is that the player that was minus 36 horrible, tonight? Horrible. horrible last time, too, bro. It wasn't his fault, bro. I mean, I mean we had like a, a trillion turnovers. I mean, part, part of it was his fault, bro. They're sloppy with the ball, but go ahead. He also led the team. He led their team in scoring. He was relatively efficient on the scoring end. I don't know. I don't did, blame did him. Did anything about this game surprise any of you guys? I think we all expected the Warriors to bounce back. They haven't lost two games in a row, all playoffs. Was there anything about this game that jumped out to you that you weren't expecting? Not uh, really. Draymond Green to finish it. I mean, shit. <laughs> God damn. I've never seen a human being talk more reckless and wild to referees in my life and not get in trouble for it. But I appreciate it. Again, okay, that's black privilege, so I can't be mad at the man. <laughs> Give us us free. I, on the Draymond front, I saw that in the Mavs series where he was saying wild shit in one of the games. One of the... Uh, one of the games, he was just teeing off on the officials and he had already gotten a tech. And I was kind of waiting for that second one to come. And I don't know if they just, he knows that they're not going to throw him out so they don't have to end up in the record books and deal with all that. But he got away. He got away with quite a bit. They, gave him, they gave him a little tech. They gave him one. They gave him an early tech, team. which is actually the worst thing they could do because as soon as he got that first tech, he knew I can do whatever I want for the rest of the game and they're not going to give me the second one. Exact. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, attack! Really? Go ahead and give me a second one. Do it. Do it." <laughs> Tyler, you make Tyler, this you game about Tyler, you. Do extra it. Your focus on the game tonight. Did anything surprise you or jump out of you? No, it, it seemed like the standard fucking 2016, 2017, 2018 fucking third quarter. You know, this it's not a game anymore. A Warriors game. But to Draymond's credit, Draymond's yeah. credit. Last game, he said, "You know." We'll live with Derek White and, and you know, Marcus Smart and Al Hoffer beating us because they're not going to do that again, right? He said basketball is all about picking your poison and they'll take that, you know, every fucking time. And people are getting on his ass about that, like, you know, hating ass, old ass nigga, y'all in trouble for real. But no, nah, he was dead ass right about that because I think they had like 16 points total between those three this game. Like, uh, Horford White had 12. Had two points. Yeah, White Horford had 12. Smart, Smart had two. Hoffer had two. Hor Horford and Smart combined for four points, and White had 12. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the man knows what the fuck he was talking about. So, I think, was, I, I think you know, Smart generally will get you like 15. He's good for a good 15. He had, you know, he didn't do it tonight, but 
So I, I, I don't think he – I mean, Horford obviously played, like, outside of himself the first game. I didn't think he was going to drop down to two, goddamn. And Jalen Brown didn't play that well tonight either, so. I'm, I'm curious – I'm curious to, to talk about the Draymond thing just for another second. Um, I, I'm curious for your guys' opinions. After the game, you know, everyone's – all the reporters are asking about the press conference. You're obviously officiated differently. You're getting away with stuff with one tech that you wouldn't get away with otherwise, you know, that other people couldn't get away with. And I think Draymond might have – he might have put the hex on himself a little bit because his answer to that question was like, you know, I've earned the right to be officiated differently, et cetera, et cetera. And as I was listening to his answer, it was like, you're not supposed to acknowledge publicly that they're officiated. That's part of the game is that you don't – like you pretend that it's just a coincidence that they're not giving you the <laughs> second technical foul. So I that almost made me think like I wonder if in Boston – the refs just decide, like, okay, we're going to make a statement. We're going to do it early in the series in game three so we don't have a he's missing game seven situation or something like that. But I don't know. Yeah. Do you think that could change, or do you think it's just the refs are never going to want themselves to be part of the story? They're never going to give him the second technical foul. Yeah, I don't think he's ever going to get that second. I don't want him to get ejected either. You know what I'm saying? Because, for one, I, if the Warriors do lose this shit, I want him to lose fair and square. I don't want to hear any motherfucking crying. We saw in 2016 motherfuckers cry about that ejection like Bronny fucking 41 burger him up when he came right back. So, yeah, I don't want any fucking excuses. I want Draymond to play the whole game. And like I said, I don't mind the little dust stuff because the Celtics are giving it right back to him. Right? Like, like, like Jalen was throwing the, the elbows back. You know, Grant Williams was smacking the arm off him too and shit. So, let them boys have the little, those little dust stuff. It ain't hurt nobody. Imagine a human being that's averaged like eight points per game in their career talking about they could get officiated. I just, again, God is great. I love to see black privilege. <laughs> God is, God is, God, he will. Well, I'm just saying, you know, like, imagine saying that in a press conference after you drop like nine and five. Like, yeah, dog, I, just, I earned the right to just do whatever I feel single. like. Out here. The triple single. I'm out here leading the league right. triple singles. <laughs> Walking right to the Hall of Fame with them nine points, yeah. too. You feel me? Like uh, Jalen Brown did say that uh, Draymond tried to pull his shorts down during the game today. <laughs> he yeah, did. Draymond shit. I mean, does, is anybody surprised by that? I'd almost be no. surprised if he didn't but, do some weirdo shit like that. He, you know what I mean? Here's my thing. Here's my thing with the Celtics fans complaining about Draymond. It's like, you have Marcus Smart. Like, this is not some uneven Marcus fight. Smart Marcus Smart flops. Does all He's not this pulling shit. people's pants mm-hmm. down. No, but uh-huh. Marcus Smart will, but Marcus Smart does lots of like in the grill yeah. crazy shit, bro. He Name, was doing today. Yeah. Names one he's weirdo always thing done he's that. done. He he's never his hair tried green, to kick bro. somebody in there. Okay, but he but, but Draymond's kicking and punching niggas in their dicks. He dyed you know his hair saying? green. He, what are we he's talking about? Pulling draws down. You feel me? Like, bro, <laughs> that's some particular that that's some Draymond shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, but Marcus uh, Smart is Mar- Mar- annoying. Uh, here you go. He's Mar- annoying. First Google. First Google. Marcus Smart ejected for punching Matt Bonner in the dick. Wow. So he, uh, he punches so dicks too, but Draymond to Draymond Google. punched the go. We ain't got a Google. We ain't got a Google Draymond. I, we know what Draymond know, he are. Just, it's we always, know what Draymond he, are. Draymond punched go no. dick. Okay, Draymond punched <laughs> go <laughs> dick. Draymond was just doing it under a brighter light, you know. Punching Matt Bonner on a Tuesday night in That's January, no one's gonna know. You're, you're punching that dick for the love of the game, right? You know? Right. right. <laughs> for the love of the dick punch, you know what I mean? Draymond had to punch Bron in the dick. He was about to get that man forty. You know what I'm saying? You punch a Bonner. What did he do to you? But exists for the love of the me? game. That's a re- that's a retired oh. prize fighter walking into a bar in Siberia and just fucking. Right. I just need to hit something. Like I just need it. I'm punching uh, Bonner dick. <laughs> I'm about to punch a Bonner dick tonight. Um, I think we've uh, we, we've we've mentioned some names that'll be up for this, but Chuck's got it on his list. Uh, most disappointing player in game two. Who do you got? We got to go, Mr. Platanos, Al Horford, just uh, twenty six point performance. <laughs> Mr. But I, I know I know it was Cook, Maritza. I, I know it was Cook. <laughs> When they try to throw this man a lob, and it's like, wait a minute, I'm just telling you, Lewis. They try to throw him a lob on the break, and he just came right back down with the earthbound, tried to. <laughs> that's the same shit I would do at 30, 40 years old. That's not his fault. Don't throw me no goddamn that's, lob. What y'all why think? Why throw that man a lob? That's a problem. But he's still averaging game. 14 points a game in the finals. That's how I always used to look at things the brighter side. Hey, we could find those two. It's 28 mm-hmm. points total. I didn't say how I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we're we're fucking measuring Al Harford on a an adjusted scale now because you know this is probably the Al Harford we expected before he fucking started spaz in the last couple of rounds. You know what I mean? I mean I, I'll say like Clay Thompson's been a huge disappointment, but 
you know, luckily, yeah. That's what luckily, I was going to say. Jordan Poole has been picking up the slack like a motherfucker, but Clay been stinking it tweet? up, bro. What was that tweet? What was the tweet about Jordan Poole? We'll get. I, I got. We'll, 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 we'll get. We'll get to the Jordan Poole tweet. Uh, we'll get to well, the Jordan Poole no, tweet. No, but for to, sure. to Tyler's point, like you know, Clay, just the legs don't look like they have the lift. The def- the defense isn't where it once was, and you know when we were outside the Warrior Stadium, we were asking fans, "You can only keep one: Pool, Wiggins, or Clay. Who are you keeping?" And they all, or who are you getting rid of, rather? And they're like, "Uh, get rid of Wiggins." And it's like, you want to keep this dynasty going? The smart move is not to get rid of Wiggins, and I'm that's telling you, it's question. not to get rid of Jordan Pool. Yeah, that's that, that, that's, that's so, an interesting question. I, I just if I, I love Clay to death. I, I don't know if it's the headband slowing him down. I, I don't. I don't Look, know. I, I do. I, headband I, Clay just ain't the I same. I do think we talked in our finals preview about you know everyone's looking at this as the Warriors' offense versus the Celtics' defense. But in my opinion, the reason I picked the Warriors is that the Warriors' defense was the third-rated defense in the league this year, and the Celtics' offense I have much less confidence in. Although obviously, if they just continue to shoot fifty percent from three, it's going to go great. But this is a game tonight where they still shot forty percent from three up until the point where the game stopped being competitive, but they shot like 28% from two. And I thought the way the Warriors switched their defense up, the way they were uh, not allowing Al Horford to be a distributor in the paint, and complete, you could just see how frustrated he was, and it led to him just completely not looking to score. I think they deserve a lot of credit for the defensive adjustments they made, and I'm very excited for game three, which is going to be both a chess match and a, an absolute brawl, I think. Like... <laughs> But do you think I mean do you think the Warriors can keep out adjusting the Celtics defensively? Like I just it does feel like the Celtics game plan hinges on we'll still be able to just not miss threes for a quarter you know, of every game. So I don't know. Do you think the Warriors are gonna be able to keep out adjusting them? Yeah. Is that the Warriors? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's all I have to lean back on. Like, like, you know, the, these Celtics are a new commodity, you know, it's a new fucking squad with Eme. So, you know, this is the most that we're seeing of them in them in a postseason run. But um yeah, I, I do think that the Warriors are going to be able to adjust. But to the Celtics' credit, they haven't lost two games yeah. back-to-back this whole postseason. Like, they're a team that makes, you know, great adjustments, too. So, you know, going back home, they got the split they wanted, so we'll see. If this, I mean, felt like a must-win for the Warriors because you go to Boston down down 0-2, yeah. that shit's basically a wrap. I don't care if you, you win one there. It still doesn't feel good. But, um. You know, it was interesting. We had Nick Young in the other day. We asked him who is be- the best coaches he ever had, uh, who he ever played for, and he didn't mention Steve Kerr. I don't know if it was just like he was tired and kind of forgot. I think Steve Kerr is a great coach and has the ability to adjust. Uh, it'll be interesting because like, I think we're due for a good clay game. Steph's putting him in. He wants the MVP trophy. So I don't know how much they need to adjust. If I mean, if Clay goes off or Poole goes off, this is an even bigger. Do you guys think Clay's win, gonna? Do so. you? Guys, I mean, what do you guys think we're gonna get from Clay? Do we? Do you think we're gonna get a Clay game, or do you think he's just? It's not there in his legs, and it's just not happening this year. What do you think? He's he's due for one, right? I mean, I'm just saying, like you know, Clay and Wiggins both had 11 points in this game. One of them is going gonna you know at least play good in the next couple of games. That's your point with Steve Kerr. I've never seen Steve Kerr take a pack of mid and make it exceptional, right? I think what Ime Adoka has done in this first season, they were 23 and 24 at one point to now be in the finals is remarkable. Obviously, he's got a talented squad. But, you know, Absolutely. when Kerr, Kerr, when Kerr has a great team, he's going to get them to the highest level. But it's not like he's taking – he's just overperforming with a bunch of mid out there. When they're mid, they're mid. And when, when they're, they're excelling like this, they're excelling. But I think when you look at this Warrior squad, they just got so many dudes who can hit – and the odds of them all not hitting on every, you know, you might get that one game out of seven, but it's not going to happen for a whole series. Steph obviously got the the finals MVP right now in his pocket. I think win or lose, you know, if we, we want to go that side. But ultimately, yeah, between between Clay or Wiggins, one of them is going to have a good game, even if Wiggins get back to that 20-point level. And it's like, how do you stop that? Ime and Nia Long better get them Tulum, Cancun reservations ready. <laughs> I but I will Steph say this, a, if I'm a Celtic and my head coach is out there pulling me along, I'm going to run through a wall for him because I already know he's got a solid mouthpiece and he's got the game. I think Kerr is the Steph of coaches. Well, like, he's great with a great team, right? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, Steph is great on a great team. On a bad team, you know, we don't we – don't, we, he wasn't always – he wasn't the best, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, I mean, but, yeah, I, th- I think, like, you know, with the experience and stuff, stuff like that, I think they'll just figure it out. You know, I mean, like the, re- the same reason we thought they'd win it is the same reason. It was, I mean, we, we know they'll, they'll make the adjustments that are necessary because they've done it before. So, um, yeah. yeah. 
So did you see? So so game one, obviously the the uh, the Warriors had that huge third quarter, but then they lost the fourth quarter, forty to sixteen. Did you see the reports that Ime basically like pulled out a, a oak casket aged? Vintage bottle of toxic masculinity for his speech to before the fourth quarter. There, yeah, yeah. He said he yeah. basically he was like, "You guys are playing like bitches." He said they're he he didn't say they're trained. He said they're punking you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you should be embarrassed. Hey, like uh, you know, One hey, time. we can progress as much as we want societally, but if a, a a man that you respect looks you in your eyes and says they're fucking. <laughs> They're punking you. One time. That's just trade to one time Does that not AS- still turn you all the way up to eleven? <laughs> <laughs> one time when I one time at ASU, uh, we had a bad home losing streak. So coach gets us all together, right? All the coaches, managers, players, and he makes us all sign the floor. Okay. And then he gives this speech and he's like, This is your home, okay? You can't let people come into your home and jerk your brother around. That's your brother. <laughs> Only you can jerk your brother. And I watched a huddle full of 25 grown men trying not to laugh. Is this man's yelling? You only you can jerk your brother. And I was like, Herb, what is wrong with you? So God bless Coach Sendek. Yeah, it, you know, it either works or it really doesn't work, right? When you go the toxic masculinity. Yeah, oh, we, we lost a lot yeah. of games. Right? <laughs> a lot of brothers got jerked. <laughs> yeah. Only you can jerk your brother. Yes. Yes. Did he not understand what the kids were thinking? What fucking 21 year olds were thinking when you say only you can jerk your brother? Yeah. I'm standing there and Diedrich Taylor, who's now the uh, coach at Fullerton, (laughs) is holding my shirt and standing behind me trying to hide how hard he's laughing from his own head coach. That's incredible. Um, All right. I do want to nominate to the uh, all-time pantheon of tweets about players, which includes uh, the guy who said that uh, Giannis hoops like a street shark and uh, the person who said that... uh, (laughs) That might be the best. That came out of left field, and it what made was, so what, what, much what was, sense. I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess the players up. What's the, what's the Chris Middleton one? Well, um, Paul George is the LeBron James of Chris Middleton. Yeah, but then, or was it Chris Middleton? Yeah, but, 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 then, but then Chris Paul Middleton George. balled out, and we were like, "Hold up, Chris right. Middleton might be the LeBron James of Paul George." Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, Damn. Okay. That so should make at, a lot of sense. At he's still cold has a I think an entry into the the player description pantheon. He said Jordan Poole hoop like it's nothing but bad bitches watching. <laughs> That's good or bad sometimes though. It you is. Know what I mean? Like you can do crazy shit. You know what I mean? You know, it, it can go either way, like you said, Joe. It can turn left on you very quickly. Bro, when, when he hit that motherfucker from one step over half court in that triple team trap, did you see the glowing look of approval that Steph had on him when he walked into Like, he was like, this motherfucker just like me. Like, you don't see Steph with that motherfucker. <laughs> like, devil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he got that same <laughs> devil in him. You know what I'm saying? There was a little bit of other basketball news that that broke today. Pretty big story. Uh, Quinn Snyder uh, has. I, I'm trying to remember what the stupid phrasing on the press release was. It was like it, it was like a, a Quinn Snyder consciously uncouples from the Utah Jazz or something. It was like yeah. he, Quinn Snyder ends his tenure with the Utah Jazz or something. It was like he quit. He quit because he doesn't like living in fucking Utah. He's been doing it for eight years. <laughs> he's fucking over it. Yeah. Uh, what was your guys' reaction to this news? You think he's going to the to San Antonio to be the heir apparent? Uh, what do we think is going on here? You just get sick of being in Utah? What do you think? Nostradamus. I think his nostrils thank him. I'm sure it's hard to get what he's looking for in that particular city. Oh, I could see him, you know, <laughs> becoming Yo. assistant coach on the Heat. That would be a, a great location for him. Orlando. I mean, somewhere just kind of, you know, in that Colombian pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> Utah is known for for uh, being a, having a great snow culture, but not the type that Quinn Snyder is looking for. That's what like, they're like, if you come here, you can go skiing. He was like, ah, oh, I didn't mean that kind. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Snyder, but you beat us in the tournament. And I've never forgiven you for it. Yeah, I was about to say, there's some personal beef there for sure. Oh, two, fucking San Jose. 
Uh, but but in Quinn's defense, I will say this: we played Mizzou, I think, O two San Jose Sweet Sixteen, and I'll never forget this. And I always had the most utmost uh, respect for him. He literally started cussing Kareem Rush out because he wouldn't shoot. He was like, "Motherfucker, if you don't shoot, I'm gonna take you out the game." I was like, "I've never heard a coach ever say that." And I was like, "God, I would love to play for this dude." So in Quinn's yeah. defense, I don't know if he's still like that. Obviously, we've heard other rumors. You have to keep your boo away from all that good stuff. But back in those days, I was like, "Yo, this is a dude I could definitely play for." I think. I mean, going to San Antonio makes a little sense. I think there's not many vacancies left. I'm curious who Utah is going to get because ostensibly they have good pieces, but I think they're in blow it up mode now. So like, sure, going to be interesting where Donovan Mitchell lands. Sure, going to be interesting where Rudy Gobert lands. And <laughs> Gobert, you know, Gobert. Yo, you put Rudy, that in Rudy my Gobert. brain so much. Call him Rudy. We don't Gobert, respect but... your country, homie. So we gonna pronounce your name how we feel like it. <laughs> That's me with Bajelica. I told John and Tyler, I, I'm gonna call him Bajelica forever. He's European. I don't have. It's not racist for me to pronounce his name incorrectly on purpose for the rest of my life. I'm never calling him anything but Bajelica. Bajelica. <laughs> Bajelica <laughs> Houston. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the thing about the Quinn Snyder shit is like, okay, we all know that there's gonna be a major overhaul there somehow, some way, like. Was he not on board with the shit they want to do, or did he just not want any parts of it? You know what I mean? Like, were they thinking about shipping Donovan out, and he wasn't on board? Then he's like, nah, if that's what y'all are doing, I'm out. Or did he just not want any parts of the rebuild? I mean, I would understand either part. And you, you see Donovan Mitchell, you know, released the, the statement, I am distraught over what this means for me. Like, that motherfucker was out, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, he sees his yeah. out now, and now he's, you know, playing the things. You know, like, like, he's telling he's like, motherfuckers, <laughs> come get him, please. You know what I'm saying? So... We'll see, man. Gets the tweet off, goes right back to Zillow that's got all of his tabs open for new houses and apartments in New York City. Like, yeah, there's no way. Yeah. The downfall and sell-off of the Utah Jazz is, for me, like the first choking noise that Joffrey made in Game of Thrones. It's just like, <laughs> yes, yes, I've been waiting for this. I needed it so bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So great. Our non basketball topic for the night is actually a snow roach update uh, to outdo all other snow roach updates. <laughs> From the Mayday's Wolf- monkey update. This is. Dad, <laughs> 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 Okay. Have you guys heard of the sport of Bar. cheese rolling? Oh, yeah. Okay. In Gloucester, in England. There is a big Jubilee cheese rolling festival every year where they go to the top of the biggest hill in town. And it's a big fucking hill. And they take a, a block of cheese. It's three and a half kilograms, which is like seven and a half pounds. They roll it down the hill and all of the men go chasing after the cheese. And whoever gets it wins the cheese. That's what they get. Very frequently, people dislocate hips like nasty injuries is part of the cheese rolling competition. So this cheese rolling contest came back for the first time since COVID. We made it. The culture is still We're alive. Back. Cheese rolling survived COVID-19. So that, that the video went viral. A bunch of guys went to the hospital. Someone fractured part of his spine. You know, the usual kind of stuff that happens when you're trying to run down, run down a steep hill as fast as you can. <laughs> but I dug a little deeper. Because I wanted to know who won the first cheese rolling contest since COVID. And what I found out, gentlemen, will shock and astound you. The winner today is a guy named Chris Anderson, who is 35 years old and won the cheese rolling chase for the 23rd time. I thought it was Birdman. (laughs) (laughs) I saw you doing the bird thing. Chris Anderson, uh, he finished second at 17, and he's basically won everything ever since. He's a LeBron James of cheese rolling in Gloucester. He grew up across the street from this hill, probably dreaming of throwing himself face first down the hill after a block (laughs) of cheese. And let me tell you this fact about Chris Anderson, because we've been talking about the love of the game. The cheese they roll is called double Gloucester cheese. And Chris Anderson does not like double Gloucester cheese. He only eats cheddar cheese. So after Mm. throwing himself down the hill, he auctions the cheese off and donates the money to charity. (laughs) Yeah, good. A slow guy. He has over the last 18 years, (laughs) he has dislocated both shoulders, broken an ankle. (laughs) 
gotten several concussions, torn his calf muscle, and bruised both kidneys. What is his trick? His what, trick. Like, what, what's, if what's, you watch, what's, what's, and I go, go, go. I went into, I went down the rabbit hole on cheese rolling. His trick is that he runs, and as soon as he starts losing momentum, what everyone else does is they kind of flail around, and that's how they get hurt. He just tucks himself in somersaults and then, like, stands up and, like, keeps his momentum going. Because what I thought his strategy was, which is what I would do, would be just wait for everyone yeah, else wait to knock themselves to unconscious. die and then just walk That would be you and me, Tyler. Down right? the hill. Yeah. <laughs> We'd wait till everyone else was twitching and fucking <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Casually God. stroll down the hill and collect our cheats. <laughs> Stepping over some torn ACL. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to shine the spotlight on the Snow Roach of the Week, Chris Anderson, twenty-three um, oh, time Jubilee Cheese Rolling Contest champion in Gloucester. Uh, UK John, Snow Roach of the Week, brought to you by Jergens Cocoa Butter. <laughs> Sell it. John, I love the idea of you stepping over someone, teeth all over the ground, and you look at the cheese like this? Oh, you'll be eating through a straw. You couldn't even enjoy this. You just pick up the cheese like, what the fuck? Brother, people get fucked up doing this sport. I've seen the videos. Yeah, it's like it's like a, it's like the you know the chasing the bulls thing or the the running of the bulls or whatever. So I just don't have that yeah. gene or part of my brain. Like, I just don't understand. Especially like he doesn't even like the cheese. He's, He's trying to explain to his mom at 18 why he tore his calf off his fucking femur. And he's like, well, at least I got this cheese. But he's just doing it for the fame and the glory of being the cheese rolling champion. He's a oh. cheese thought. Cheese <laughs> thought. <laughs> I thought for cheese. <laughs> LeBron James said he wants to go on a podcast soon. I suggest he comes on. Jenkins and Jones are out of pocket. We'd love to have you, LeBron. If we cannot get LeBron, I would love to get Chris Anderson and explore his rationale for what, what's behind the hunt for the cheese. You know, what's motivating him? I bet it's not even like – I bet it's nothing. I bet it's just like it, – this is just what I do. He's hit his head so many times he's forgotten that he's won it. And he just keeps showing up. <laughs> this is the year I finally win. It's like, no, no, you've won every year. He's like, have I? Oh. You know, like. All right, y'all. That's all the time we got for today. Uh, next game will be on Wednesday night. Uh, we will have a Jenkins and Jones episode that day. Obviously, Buckets will have all kinds of great Bucketsy out-of-pocket coverage going as well. So we'll see y'all then. There's a lot Bye. of bags getting distributed. Get these bags, gentlemen. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, hello, Buckets. Did you enjoy that video? Well, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to the channel. Check out some of the other videos we have. They're all fantastic. Also, like the video and make sure to comment on it. Anything you want to tell any of us.